musical journeys. Today in studio we have an award-winning activist, musician, um, proud husband and so much more, Alexio Kawara. Welcome. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, always good to be chatting to people. Yes. So, yeah, nice. Thank Such you. a pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. So Alexio broke into the scene in the 2000s with a, an album, a song called Amai. Um, would you like to tell us about your journey and tell um, us more about yourself? <laughs> right, sure. Um, so I started music actually in 1999. Wow. Um, I was auditioned to be part of a group called Guess. Mm -hmm. And then I auditioned with that song, Amai, mm -hmm. which became a hit. Oh, you were part of Guess. <laughs> so part of I didn't know you were part of Guess. No, I was part of Guess. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I was part of Guess. I was, I was the fourth member. Guess was already in existence when I joined. So okay. um, I became the fourth member after the fourth member had left. So I became the replacement. So. Wow. And, we, and we, we only did one song, you know, yeah. surprisingly. Or I don't know, fortunately, or I think unfortunately, because we could have done more. So we did um, Amai and then a couple of other songs that we didn't get to release. 
Um, and then after that, just sort of uh, everybody went their own way. Like, I think we had expectations. That Who were the other guys in guests? Uh, there was um, Jalani Makalima. You know Jalani Makalima. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was uh, Brian Garikai, uh, Donda Kumalo. The other guys didn't really become active in the music scene or inter entertainment industry after that. And then, yeah, so and then I, I became a solo. I was forced to become a solo artist. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so I became a solo artist and then started my solo journey with my albums. And then now I have like six albums now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So uh, the albums, let's see, namely there was Osazun Sia, Ruyo Wangu, Timbi Yangu, Kana, Tuosi, and the current one which is called Oi. And out of all of your albums, which is your favorite? Which speaks mostly, which, which embodies you the most? And your craft um, and your art? You know, I think, I think as an artist it's very difficult okay. to tell because like obviously you're growing up, yes. you know, and, and every... Uh, creative process happens to link or to tally with your age at that point. Okay. So it, it was speaking to me, it was uh, representing me when I wrote it. When, when, I, I okay, I understand, yeah. yeah so, so, so the first one was me then, and then the current one is me now, you know. So every album has got a special place in my history uh, because I'm writing it over time. Oh, okay, kind of I see. So we're able to follow your journey through your projects and your music? Yes, I, okay. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, yeah. yeah I, I just want to take you back to, to, to this song. I, I, I need uh, the, the crew behind the scenes, please. This, this is a very amazing song, to be very honest with you. <laughs> I, I wanted to actually confirm, because I thought you wrote the song, uh, 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 and then Cass performed it. I'm being honest, uh, I didn't know you were actually one of the guys. This is one of the best songs we have ever had uh, in, in the early days. I, I think we're going to be playing this song called uh, Amai. Uh, this, this is one of the best songs we have ever had. Uh, th these were the, like the early days of urban music in, in Zimbabwe. And this song was like, wow. And I, when I, the only thing, I, I, I'm being honest, I thought, I thought your, your effort there was the actual yes, writing, the writing of this song. song. Okay. And, I, and I've listened to the song over and over again. I, I, I'm your top fan. <laughs> I, I, I didn't really hear the Alexa into that song. Okay. So I think we want to check this song to our, to our artists, uh, to, our, to our viewers uh, in the next few minutes. And then we, we allow them to also get to, to listen to this song as well. But uh, uh, exciting. I, um, Be before, before we do that, uh, Alexio, I, 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 will, I will just have to do one very selfish thing. Uh, for me, I, my best song that you have ever done. <laughs> I don't care what other people feel. I think my best song, uh, we need to play it now, and then we, we, we take a short break during this uh, song, and then we go back to my, my best song you've ever done was um, Skanaka Naka. Yes. Yeah, I'll go to my second yes. song to take a song. <laughs> listen, listen to me, I agree with you. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> so so I, I, think, I, I think for now, uh, I want to push you back uh, to, to, to Skanaka Naka, and then... And then we take a short little break, and then we come back to this interview. And, and, and I, I want to ask you some certain questions about Mskanaga Naga. And then I've got very personal questions about my second best song. So <laughs> let, let's take you back uh, to Mskanaga Naga. <laughs> I'm 
It's been it's been a lot of years. Yeah. I think that that's a 2005 production. Yes, yes, somewhere along there. Yeah. So um, and that was that was a project. It was a single. It was a part of a compilation album from the Kingston's Music Corporation 25th celebration. Oh yeah, the Kingston Music one. Corporation thing. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes I remember. Yeah. Trevor Dongo's song is also on that same album. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's when I started knowing Trevor Long. But anyway, <laughs> so what was going on in my mind? I was trying to get you guys away from that. <laughs> you know, so, that I, so, that, so, that, so that I think more. Yeah. But anyway, what was going on in my mind then was I, I, I think, well, my, my wife is dark in complexion, uh -huh. like me. Okay. So firstly, it was about her. Uh, and then wow. obviously... Well, you <laughs> so you were married by then? No, no, no. Okay. We, we were still dating. So you were writing a song for your wife, I would say. Yes, yes. Ah. Uh, for my girlfriend. Oh, then. For your oh, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> ah. yeah, well, I, I didn't know what was going to happen after, but then, you know, I fell deep in love, then we got married. Yeah. Uh, actually, I actually used your song. Um, okay. <laughs> keep, keep, keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's a <laughs> um, so, yeah, I... And then uh, I think I just wanted a song to appreciate African women also at the same time. But then I was still young and then I didn't, I, for me, I don't think that song is very serious in terms of lyrical content. It's a song that is just talking about a guy, a young guy who, who's, who has his fantasies exactly. about a girl, yeah. you know. Yeah. So basically, I think that was <laughs> the same it thing. It spoke well to us yeah. in our generation exactly. then. That's, that's just how you, Thank you very much. like it. And up until now, for me, it's, it's, it's like my best track for you. I know it, it's not the best track from Alexia, or it's not the popular track from you, but for me, that, that track, I can listen to it oh, over so. and over <laughs> again. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. No, that's amazing. So I also, I did see, learn that you are a, the third child out of five, and your family is very much into music, that your siblings have also pursued ca careers in music? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. My, but they, I think they're more, let's just call them artists. Artists, okay. Yeah, my, my brother, is has got interests in music. He's the second born. Mm -hmm. He's got interests in music, okay. kind of, but he's mainly into poetry. Mm -hmm. My sister also poetry. I think they're more into the writing bit. Oh, you okay, know? okay. Uh, then uh, my late brother. I lost a brother about two years, two years back. Uh, thank you. So I did. Um, he he used to do. I don't know what you call that. The art painting. The design, the, the album art. Yeah, the, the painting, the drawings, okay. the, the graphics, and what, 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 that's, that was his part of the arts. Okay. So I think we are all creative. Creative, yeah, okay, Yeah, if, okay. if, I, if I may put it that way. So no one ex is ex exactly pursuing, except my sister, the one who comes after okay. me. She's, she's got a couple of songs, but she's not that serious into the mm -hmm. music industry, but she uh, she's actually recorded a couple of songs. But I, I think I pushed more into becoming a um, full-time musician. Okay. And knowing what you know now, would you still encourage her to pursue a career in the arts and music and... Um, yeah, you know, but you know what my advice would be, maybe to her and to other people who, who love music or want to become musicians. 
you know, it's, it's not easy. Like, there are a lot of things. It's, it's an industry where appreciation is what earns you money. Yes. You know, yes. when people appreciate you, then you, you, you become more popular. And then the yes. more people appreciate you, then you become more and more popular. So the thing is, it's not easy to make, to impress a person. I can know? imagine, yeah. So it's not easy. So you have to do it for yourself firstly. Okay. You know, you have to just give the people your heart. And then once people appreciate that, then yeah, you're good. But before that, you know, if you don't see that light, yes. you might give up in the process. Okay. Yeah, so I think if she feels she can go through it, then yeah, she, she, yeah. she should break her so leg. So for all young and aspiring artists, you heard it here first. <laughs> 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 well, that's great advice. Um, so something I do want to just touch on since we're talking about family. In 2017, um, you did an interview and you spoke about your marriage and your wife and how important it was to maintain a certain amount of like integrity um, for her and your marriage and your image as a whole. Um, can you like elaborate a bit more on that? Um, you know, I think... Uh, I don't no, think no, it's no, something no. that artists speak about enough. Um, That's true. And, and I believe like it's not just for artists, mm -hmm. it's for everyone. Individual, you know, yes. When, when you are joining or when you are uniting with someone to become one mm -hmm. it's not something that you should just take for granted yes. or just you know Preach. think of <laughs> yes. so when when i got married uh, i think i was seriously mm -hmm. in love obviously and then i also wanted to sort of um uh, there's there's um i don't know what to call it exactly like this belief that people have mm -hmm. especially about the arts industry mm -hmm that musicians are like this, musicians are like that, yes. or popular people are like this. I wish I, wish I could, I wish I could just say it the way I wanted to say it, but I, I hear you. Yes, I, I hear you. Like 80%, <laughs> like I would say the larger majority of exactly. like artists. And, and it's, part of it is not a lie because the pressures that come with yes. the whole being popular bit. But, you know, I think I wanted to prove a point, firstly. I, I really... It's also grace, mm -hmm. by the way, because obviously people are like, you know, we, we are weak <laughs> yes. in our own yes. nature. Yes. So some are falling over you. We are seeing this <laughs> like a lactio. But you just need to separate the two. You okay. really need to separate the two. They, there's you, the entertainer. There's you, the father, and there's you, the friend, and the the, the the husband. You know, so you need to separate everything. When you're on stage, do whatever you have to do to impress people. Obviously, not street naked, yes, but yes. just <laughs> just just you impress to, yes. impress people, entertain people, and then after that, after the show, your work that is done. Yes. You know, you're going home to be a husband. You're going home to be a father. So that's I think that's what I've tried to do. I, I I hope I, I'm succeeding. <laughs> like I said, it's grace. So yeah. yeah. While, while you're still there, I I I'll ask uh, our crew behind the scenes uh, on a law. I want them to play something on the background while you're still there, right. which is my second question. Sorry, I, I enjoy putting you on the spot. <laughs> There's a song. It's it's my second best song from you, yeah. which I honestly felt that this was like a wow, uh, and and the song uh, Tinodana and you and Terry. I Trust me, this is one song that I can, I can play over and over again. Uh, if you can just have that song on the background for the purposes of our viewers who do not know this song, maybe you can just say we don't know. I, I just need to understand some legs. Here you are. How, how does this work with your wife? And you've got this song, it's you and uh, Cherry Rai. I know it happens a lot in the, in the film business. Uh, you, you, you can literally see your husband. Is hugging and kissing I, with another wife, yes. right? And here you are. You are not just singing about love this time around. You are singing about your love with Jerry. Right? At any point, did your wife feel like, um, what's going on here? I, I think it's best if she was here to answer. That. <laughs> <laughs> because she could have felt something, you know. Because it's, it's. I think it's natural for her to feel maybe jealous because yeah. it's it, well, it's natural. Yes. It's natural, yes. you yes. know. Yes. Yes. Um, but she really didn't tell me much okay. you know so you, you never <laughs> had a discussion about, about, about how she felt <laughs> yeah and and uh remember like i i got married in 2008 mm -hmm. and we did you know, way before that but we already dated oh, so oh. i'm sure she felt jealous i'm, I'm sure you know I, yeah i'm sure she did oh you know, should have felt jealous no this this changes the whole scenario she yes. wasn't your wife then yes and there you are bang you know, and, and she, she's like, 
Yo, hold on. I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting for you there. Yeah. And they're telling the whole world that it's you and Jenna having a thing there. Yeah. yeah well, I, I think it's like you said, it's the same acting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was acting and there was no. Not the good thing with music is you're recording in a studio and, and it's different from acting, you're actually acting the parts out. Yeah. Yeah. So for me it was just a song that we did together and I fell in love with the with Tira's voice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. She's I, an amazing lady and an amazing. amazing voice. And I did that song before I even met her. You know, like I had only had a song on, wow. on, on radio. Wow. And then I called her, I looked for a number and then I called her and I was like, you know what, can you please have a collaboration? She was excited. She came to the studio and then we did a song and then it became a hit. Yeah, she actually knew that it was a hit when we were still in the studio. I, I, I see. That's, that's, very, that's a very interesting scenario. I, I don't want to check you back to that. I think maybe the next time we call you in, uh, we just need to go back to where it all started. But I know we have a different discussion all together today. Uh, we, we'll do it on a Thursday. I want to go back to where it all started and how you guys started. But back then, sorry to put you on the spot, I know you were a name then. And then I, I think she may, she may have just done a song and another one with my skill. Was she a brand by then? Um, she was. Uh, at, that was, uh, I think, uh, the Chamembe. Yeah, yeah that was Chamembe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had done uh, the song that I really remember uh, with its uh, Wayan. Yeah. Oh, 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 yes. So that song I heard it on radio. I'm like, Ooh, wow, wow, this girl can sing. At this only time I'm allowed to do it. This call is Joshua. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> please allow me. No, no, oh, no, yeah. one, no one will judge you. No one will judge you. Yeah, so yeah. we did that, and I was like, you know what? Uh, she, she was a brand. She was already a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maskiri was there. Yeah, yeah. was a hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah Maskiri was already there. Okay, all these guys were there. The Chamembe was a hit. Remember Chamembe? Yeah, the album. Was they were like taking over then. Exactly. Yeah. And Evan Goose was, you know, the one at that time also. So it was easy, even like everyone had to listen Could to you call yourself an Evan Goose? Ah, uh, well, I'm not too sure. I'd like, you know, it's very Thank, you, thank you for saying that because I've told people that no, Lex asked for my Urban Grooves. So, could you differentiate between Urban Grooves and what you contemporary Afro use? Well, you know what? You know, you know why it's difficult for me to classify myself? Yes. Because I, I genuinely just sing. Okay. You know, whatever you and feel, uh, whatever I'm feeling, and I can, I can feel Zim dance right now, and I can do it. You know? can, 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 I just say, can I just say it from from my side? We are the friends, right? Yes. So, so you, you know, half the times, uh, you guys, you're artists, you make your music, and the fans, our job, we are always fighting over you guys, right? So I remember one of the battles that we did. I was like, no, 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 no. Let's ask you my Zim dance, or I'll ask you my head and clothes, you know. And and we, we we tend to put you in a category which you are there on your own, like we can't. You know, okay, let me not bring another artist name, but you, you, you're not like necessarily Evan Groove. And I know for sure that you started way back before the Evan Groove thing was was then, was hyped up. And uh, while I'm still on that point, uh, I arguably, or do you admit that this song that we're going to be playing uh, was the song for me, or maybe to most people that really gave you the name, Chibugu Bugu. It was like, what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. when, when we had this song uh, that, that was now hitting the radio waves. What, what song do you think uh, gave you a name? But before you answer that question, we just want to take a bit of some shows, 10, 15 seconds, and let's take you back to Achibugu Bugu, that song that I strongly feel that it made Alexio the man. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. we'll, we'll make you respond to this. <laughs> Yeah. 
Can I answer that question indirectly? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, you see, during this time, there was not that much hype on social media. Oh, yeah. Every artist, I think, if I were to interview artists who did music then, they were simply doing music from their hearts. Mm. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we love music and yeah. we were doing music because of, you know, because you felt like doing music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll be honest, this song, we recorded it, we put it in a studio. I didn't know what was going to happen. And then it was on radio, then boom, boom. it was wow. on number one for <laughs> the longest weeks, I think. Thank you. Go that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, my, my, my point is, um, I, I, I believe the people can argue and say it was the song that made Did you have any hit it. song before Chibogo Because uh, I, 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 I honestly I can go back as far as Chibogo I, I, I think I think as a solo artist, this was my first, actually. Yeah. Because after that there was your Dino Manya, uh -huh. Kwenu, then Skana Kanaka, your favorite. Dino Manya, my day. Kuri Kure say, Yes, I, I have to read the my <laughs> day. Yeah. Yes, that, that one. Can I drink the Kuno? <laughs> I think so. I think so. No, no, I'm, so. I'm, 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 I'm trying to campaign here. <laughs> I, I think we'll talk this behind the scenes <laughs> of, <laughs> offline. So that, so that I don't get to embarrass you in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know we almost did a check together back then. Let me take you to... What? Yes, yes. 2008, oh, yes. 7. <laughs> like, you, like, I think you see the reason why we never go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so we almost, did, we almost did this track. I remember when we did this one very big show. Uh, with goodness, uh, good news on his he was like the patron of urban music then, and Kadomo was like on fire. That I, I clearly remember this event. I think it was one of the early shows that we did, uh, uh, and and we know we, we are like the patrons. We are liking music, mm -hmm. of course. Me, I was just a journalist <laughs> then, but I, I, I envisioned myself just being you know the, 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 the guy who then comes in with a little bit of hip hop and rap. Yeah, yes. You know. <laughs> I think that's how much fun we were having. <laughs> we had so much fun that you thought you could. You're changing journalism. You see, journalists. you see. <laughs> but it's a good thing that it, it, it never happened. It, never happened. it, it may happen. Never say never. You You're still alive. Never. I'm still alive. We just throw you guys in the booth and then then we'll decide. Then we'll decide. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, have you ever tried to venture into rapping per se? Um, you know, I, I believe I'm actually a very good rapper. I could imagine ah, that. I no. could definitely imagine that. I, I believe I am. But, but you know what? Because I am known to, like it's a brand. So I'm, yes. I'm trying to keep the brand <laughs> Alexia. But I believe I can actually become a good rap, rapper. I feel like you could give us very much like a Drake vibe. You know, with some singing. Like, you know, yeah. I, I, I think I'm going to see that Alexia that raps. You know what? Yeah. I, you just caught me off guard there. I'm thinking, okay. Well, right. The thing is, like, when, <laughs> I, when I do my live performances, uh, the, the rap parts on my songs that have rap, uh -huh. I, I do them. Oh, yeah. You know, like, because uh, the artist is like, there. Uh, oh, like, yeah. So I've actually had some experiences. I, I think I've earned a little bit of experience yes. from, from doing that only. We'll, we'll check this behind the scenes. I'll, I'll check my comments behind the scenes. Oh, just, yes. just for the rap part. <laughs> and, and, you know what? I, you know, I, I've actually I've been tempted. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm working on my new album. So there's uh -huh. a song that I'm actually being tempted to do rap mm -hmm. and, and just see how it goes. You I know, said oh. go for it. It could well, be like amazing. Because, you know, we are artists and yes. we create so you can do whatever But imagine. Uh, Alexio featuring Tony, it, it actually rhymes, you know what I'm I saying? I think that would be amazing. It, it actually rhymes. That's, that's a starting point. <laughs> 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 okay. it's, a, it's a starting point. Maybe you should I'll, I'll with, with a little bit of, of, of a flow there, like Alexio, Tony, and then you can carry on, yeah. and then we'll know for sure. You can do the ad-libs. Ad so uh, he can do the song, and then you can just be like the hype man. Like no, I, I know really that do the actual rap on the song. I want, I really want to do the actual rap on the song. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking this uh, challenge live yes. on our, on this broadcast. So yes. yeah, I'm seriously considering this. So I, okay, yeah, sure. so, so I, I want to feel on the tracks. Then I'll, I'll do you the actual rap, 
and then let's, let's surprise the fans. I think that I'll impress you as well. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he really was a rapper in his day. Through the grapevine, we found out, but he really was a rapper. Yeah, in his I'll, I'll, I'll get day. back that night. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. <laughs> I think that's so, Mark, time. today's the day that he was discussed. Live. You see? Yeah. You see? That's the unsigned and agreed. <laughs> sure, sure. Right, so uh, here we are today, 2020. I, I recently bumped uh, one of your very fresh new music. Um, I know the biggest track that you've ever done, undeniably, uh, from many people, is China. Uh, this, this is one track that we honestly don't need to introduce to most people. But I, I'm sure for the, for the purpose of doing justice, we can, we can have it as well uh, playing in the background. And we can have the video as we just play for a few seconds. Uh, this is the track that made Alexio a big brand. And it was like a, one of the most ever played and loved songs in Zimbabwe. But what was going on? And, uh, in the creation of that song. Let's start in the actual writing. Um, it was 2008. Yeah. And remember, it was one of the, our recessions as Zimbabweans. We were going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I, I didn't really feel, I think I, I felt the pain as a, as a Zimbabwean too. I felt the pain. And you know, as an artist, you, you translate that into a song. Uh -huh. So it's actually what I was feeling at that point. I needed hope. And I believe every Zimbabwean needed hope okay. at the same time. You know. So I, I, I came up with the song wanting to let people know that no matter how long it will take, the sun will always come up. You know, um, in history, I'm sure the battles who, which took a lot of years to be, to be conquered and stuff like that. So I actually just wanted to give myself hope, to give Zimbabweans hope that we'll... And apparently it's, it's, it's a song that does not apply only to that era or to that moment. But, it's, you know, we all need hope. That's how we remain alive, you know, because we are expecting something better the next day. Alex, let me just uh, check you, uh, keep you there. 2008 to 2020, it's 12 years after the song has been made. Up until now, your song is still a playable song. Uh, how does this make you feel when you've got lots of music that was produced in 2020, 2019, 2018? And some of these songs we've already forgotten about them. Uh, maybe as an advice or as a as a musician as well to other artists. How do you do that? How do you make a song go on eight years and it's still strong? Um, you know, I was actually thinking about this recently, and I think uh, my, the lesson the lesson that I have learned yeah. from that was the way that you write a song is determines how long the song will last. You know, you can if you just write a song because you're writing a song, you, it, it becomes just a song. But you write a song because you want to say something meaningful to someone, or even to yourself, and then turn it into a song. It, it becomes it, naturally, it has a long life. Naturally, it's not something that you really try to do, but it's writing what you have inside and then just putting it out there. It's different from trying to get influences from what everything that is going on around the world. You know and then turning it into a song. It's different from talking about cars or fashion or what, because all those things, they come and go. But things that really talk to people, they always have that, which is why you can still talk about the song Am I, even up to now. Yeah. It was the song yeah. for mothers, and mothers will always, always be there, and we all know. But we didn't get to play that song, by the way. I think we need to also play that song. I know many yeah. people, they don't, they don't know the way that the, the, the song or the group case, yeah. uh, but still uh, on China. Um, did you have anything that told you Maybe during the time when you're writing, or maybe during uh, after you've done the song, did you have any indicators to say this is going to be the song just before it went no. boom? No, no, I didn't. Wow. No, I didn't. I, 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 no one told me. I, no one told me. <laughs> not, nothing <laughs> said, produce, nothing said China it then? to me. <laughs> um, Shine has got a lot of producers. There is one. Um, the version, the original version, was actually the one with Mac D. The, the two versions to it, the one that was produced by, by Mark D, and then uh, there's Flash Gordon. Do you remember Flash Gordon? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Flash yes, Gordon yeah. did the second version, but then when I was doing the second version in the studio with Flash Gordon, Andy Brown got to be passing through, was just passing through the studio. And then he heard the song and was like, 
that's a song. I <laughs> want to put guitar on that song. Wow. You know, wow. not because I had asked him, and you know, Andy Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a legend. Yes. Andy Brown. Yes. You actually own it. Yeah. And, and then I'm like, ah, you know what? Who can say no to no to that? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he took a guitar right then and he played it. Wow. You know, and then I was I was so impressed. And then we actually got to do a couple of other tracks even after Shaina. So most people don't know that, oh. but he played on I think two other tracks of mine, just because and. I, I didn't even pay, you know, to make things even better or awesome. Wow. You know, I didn't pay him. He just did it because he appreciated the music. Wow. So, yeah. And then um, a guy called Jairo Sambahamba also got to be. So, I think China has got like four producers. Wow. And so, shout out. Uh, you have a comment there, Alexio, from, um, I think this one is a Facebook comment coming from a guy called Saungweme. Well, my, that's my favorite artist, Alexio Kawara, you know, Dineru Donemi Mof. <laughs> so yeah, that's a shout out there. So to all the guys who are watching us live right now, please you can go ahead, send your comments. We'll be able to read them loud out loud we react back to you. So we we're going to be playing a song by Alexio Shina as we go into the break and we will catch you right after that. They encourage yourself, they encourage other artists, and it's also a recognition that you, you know, you're working hard on your yes, work. Yes. But um, I, when I, when I was working on my music, and I, I'm, I hope I'm still doing that up to now. Yeah. Because it's some, sometimes you never know; you might change, even without knowing. Um, you do your music because you want people to appreciate yes. it, and I never thought I was going to get any awards in my life. So when I got the first award. Um, First awards, I think, were for the album from the young, um, where the song Tino Danana was, and I got an award for that song. I got an award for that album. I got an award for being the best. Yeah, you best mailed that year. Yeah, yeah, best yes. male Adam Uh 
and it's, it feels good, obviously, to be appreciated. Um, and I guess that's just how I feel. I feel good. I know I this may be like a really cheesy question, but yeah. so first of all, did you did you want to cry? Like, what did you feel? Like, was it like a whole lot of emotion? But did you get to that like wanting to cry? Like three awards, you know? Like that's a lot. That's uh, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm trying to go back to exactly <laughs> how I felt then, but uh, for me, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the kind of person that I uh, that I am. Uh, I just I felt appreciated, which was a good thing. Yes. I didn't really feel like overwhelmed with the oh, emotions. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, "Well, thank you. This is great. I'm doing something mm -hmm. good, and people are appreciating mm -hmm. me." And then, and then that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the crying type. I'm like walking out to the stage, I'm crying all like. Oh. I really think that's how I keep on. I, 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 I wish you're not getting any yeah. hours. <laughs> I, I wish not you yet, well. Not yet. I wish you well. I wish, I wish you uh, more awards and many Thank awards. You. Hopefully, in the you're future. presenting a good one day. Yeah, Just you, putting you, that into the universe. You will. <laughs> you will, definitely. So, yeah, that's, that was me. I think for me, it's just. I, I, I'm, I don't know the kind of person I am, but I, I'm, I'm not overwhelmed by a lot of things. I think you're super yes. humble. I think that's the word I can use. You, because you really underplayed everything and it's, it's it's amazing because there's this humility that comes with it because i feel like a lot of artists they don't carry that it's like we know who we are when we walk in so you obviously understand your potential and your talent but there's so much humility in it. it's like very admirable actually thank you <laughs> i hope it's not too much humility no, it's just no, more, no. more <laughs> dirty, more dirty you know? yeah, yeah yeah but i will uh, thank you for that one. <laughs> thank you so i'm there uh th three hours uh and 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 probably many more coming I just need to understand what, what goes on uh, in your mind. My my songs are that muno nyora, muno rota, muno roteswa, muno muno I've heard a lot of uh, versions as oh, yeah. far as artists yeah. say. Yeah. Have you ever dreamt of any song? What how, how do you yeah. do your tracks? Yeah. I think the songs that I've dreamt of, they're not. I, I never got to write them. You know, if I I think I've dreamt of a song, maybe dreamt singing a song, yeah. and then I never got to put it on paper. So it's. It stayed. Are you might say that for guess the lyrics, or you actually knew the song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it stayed in that dream, you know. Uh -huh. Because I think what happens is, if you're going to dream a song, soon after you wake up, you need to go and record yeah, it yeah. on a, somewhere and yeah. write it down. Yeah. So for me, I just let those ones go. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when I I, I get ins inspiration from anything funny, like anything that people may not expect. Mm -hmm. I can get inspiration from a gong, I can get inspiration from a word, I can get inspiration from anything, you know, and then that can become a song. It's, it's, it's weird, it's, mm -hmm. it's even weird to myself because I cannot really explain it. I can write a song from anywhere, but then what I really need to do after getting that inspiration, I need to find space and concentrate on it and then write probably the first quarter or tenth of it and then I keep it in my archives. So I have a whole list of recorded ideas on my phone. Do you have an idea of how many songs have you done so far to date? Uh, recorded and yeah, released? Like recorded and released, yeah. The ones that we've listened to, not the ones that you're going to be dreaming of. <laughs> 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 I, I, th I, think, I think over 64. Wow. I think over 64 songs. And it's, if I'm not mistaken, you have eight albums, right? I have six albums. Six albums? Yeah. Wow. I have six albums. Uh, so, actually, so it's probably around 70 because every album had more than 10 songs. Mm -hmm. So which means that's like averagely 60. And then the singles, Zajino, uh, Atitsoreke, Neana, Skanaka Naka, and a couple of Zajino from Dara, Chisha Itika, because that, that was not the election that I know. My uncle beat him when we were beat him, and I got Zajino, Chaka Chaka. Okay, slow down, Lex. What's up? What's going on there? Uh, that's that's being an artist, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's I was. It, uh, it's funny. I was listening to uh, Taras Riley uh, recently. He's got a new song that he released, yeah. and I was surprised because he's he's rapping in the song. Mm. You know, and Taras Riley is a lovey dovey yes. kind of. You know, yeah. And so, so I think that's what being an artist, give sometimes give people what they don't expect. Yes, be you, mm -hmm. the people that people know and that they fell in love with. But just sometimes just. You know, be experimental and give people something else mm. once in a while, like Jimba Mbera Chirimpoto, you know, something yeah, like that, yeah, you know, and give yeah. people something else just to get their minds. And then later on, you can get back to being yourself. It's exploring other avenues of your artistry, I guess.
Right. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, the latest video song that uh, you have recently done. Uh, sorry, I forgot the name again. Unombos uh, we, we we shall play it as, uh, later on. But what what inspired that song? Unombos uh, Vitre. It's uh, the lyrics in the song are sort of uh, a rebuke, I think, um, because most of the people when we we normally want to say sorry we say sorry too many times to a person and, yeah, yeah. and it does not make sense because after you've hurt someone and then you go back and hurt them again just mm -hmm. because you can say sorry i think it's it's unfair yeah. so the song that's what inspired the song and it speaks to me it speaks to everyone i think we all do wow, it yes, definitely. yeah we all do it because we take people for granted so it's a song that was just out there to say to people, you know what? Uh, you don't say sorry all the time. So uh, we are not your team, sorry, no. You know, you you now you now depend on you know to, every time I hurt this person, I can just say, say sorry, sorry and yeah. we move on. Yeah. So um, I think that's what inspired the song, and the sound is also I think it's a bit different from what people know, but it's also a love song uh, because these things happen mainly in relationships. So I was also experimenting with a bit of house music because as an artist you also need to reinvent yourself somehow. So because this dance music kind of um, Afro pop sound is now uh, is trending, so I wanted to do something that's on that, but also with a Zimbabwean feel. So I asked some guy to put him say a sugura uh, guitar, and then I sing it in a Zimbabwean kind of way. I, th I, I think, <laughs> but you can you can also. I don't know, but I think you can be the judges of that. I was trying to oh, be yeah. very simple. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think while we are still there, I think it only makes sense so that we just, uh, yeah, let's play the song and then we make our viewers also get to, to listen to this song and, and get uh, the, the, their comments and uh, exposure to this uh, latest song uh, from Blacks. Growing up, and even till this day, because I know that's obviously changed with time. Yes, mm. yes, it does. 
You know what? I think I've been exposed to a lot of music okay. because of my family, obviously. Mm -hmm. My brothers used to, they love reggae music. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was exposed to a lot of mm -hmm. Bob Marley yeah. music, Bunny Whaler, um, and Gregor Isaacs. Mm -hmm. And then my sister, she listened to, I, I didn't know her music, like the, the people that would that she would play but she would listen to a lot of R&B of that time okay. and that's that's the that 80s that I'm talking about so <laughs> and my my father used to listen to a lot of um, slow rumba music and a lot of uh, local music which was um, uh, I don't remember the, the, the guy's names but there's a song called Dorarang if you know it yeah it's it's an old song yeah. so those are the songs that sort of made me who I am that <laughs> And there's a guy called Se Mangwana. He used to, he's, he's, he's a rumba artist. I, I, I believe he's still alive, I think. Um, and then I also fell in love with the Bundu boys. Uh, Thomas Mapfumo. Um, and then later on, you know, I think Oliver Mtukudz was still on the low, but somehow he influenced me from the background because he, I, I love the av avenue, Samura Mashev, okay. or the... Um, <laughs> but back then there were just songs you know playing yeah. on um, the local TV stations mm. and for me I think that they were just influencing me uh, subconsciously okay. you know mm. and so now I am I think now that I, I get to choose what I want mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my inspirations they're still Bundu boys I, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. Bundu boys I love them so much yeah. Uh, I love uh, the old school Mukanya, the Kana, this is this and I love, um, I love uh, the current music that's going on right yeah, now. I, I think I, 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 I still love reggae music. Yeah. I, think, I think that, that, that one, the guy, you know, it's Okay. Yeah, reggae music, I still, I'm, I'm still in love with it. I love Terrace Riley. And um, what about, um, the reason I want to talk about cranium. Are you into cranium? Because he's also brought um, reggae and dancehall, and made it a lot more mainstream. Is he someone that still like appeals to you? Because he is kind of like in the middle. Um well, uh, you know, you know, I think I would go for there's there's this young girl. What's her name? Coffee. 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 Yes. <laughs> we have to go um, coffee. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, lo I love coffee. I love also. Um, what else? And, and I actually appreciate a lot of music. You yes, know, it's, yes. it's crazy. So, like in terms of inspiration, right now these days, I, I doubt if there are any people can really talk of one artist inspiring yes, them yes. or influencing the artist type of music because mm -hmm. there's just too much music mm -hmm. going on. I love soft rock. I act actually loved Rod Stewart back in the day. Mm -hmm. I loved uh, Brian Adams. Wow. I love um, Mafiki Zolo. Mm -hmm. I love a lot of music. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of inspiration, I think. Let's just say music inspires. Okay, just music. music. They actually a lot of even upcoming artists because I get to hear these these songs before they're out mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. They actually songs that get sent to me that I that is so even inspiring. You know, okay. like there's a group called Gwerezi. There's a guy called Dumwenge Matole. These guys are upcoming, but they're influencing my style of music. Even mm -hmm. like because when I listen, I'm like, this is new, this is fresh, and you know, I could actually get a little bit of influence from that that can you know change my way of writing. Okay. Yeah. So just another question. Um, I don't know if recently you saw um, Shuma Jozi, uh, Burner Boy, they were nominated for its Best International Act. And because of the nominations, Burner Boy had the remix with Shuma Jozi removed off the charts. Um, the reason I'm asking this, as an established artist, so my point of view on the situation, I think Burner Boy felt that she's almost riding their wave and then got the nomination. As an artist, what is your view on that? Would, if you had someone, um, your song has already reached such, like ha good levels, um, it's already successful, and someone jumps on the remix, and they gain an international um, nomination for something, what is your opinion? Would you leave them on the song, or would you let your song that you created um, be the one in the forefront? You know, okay, I think there is, um um, what can I say? These wars mm -hmm. that that are rising in the music industry yeah. that are very unnecessary. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> that, that's that's. I think that's the best way I can start yeah. answering your question. Um, reason why people do collabs 
reason why people actually write songs in the first place. And even if you ask these, all these artists, even now that they are up there, mm -hmm. I believe the first thing that drove them was actually the love for music. Yes, yes. You know, and then once that starts becoming like competition Kitchen, in, yes. in you, then for me it's already wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. music should always be uh, should always be music for for the people. people yes. You see. So an award, word, an yeah. award is recognition, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a good thing. But it's not going to really take anything away from oh. the other guy, you yeah, know. Yeah. So me getting an award doesn't mean you're, you're a bad artist. Yeah. You're also giving people, and the fact that you're actually all up there, yeah. it means you're doing something right. Yes, which is amazing, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, for me, I think it was, it was an unnecessary move. Yeah. <laughs> really <laughs> unnecessary. And, you know, if they were to really go back to why they started doing music mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. place. I think, you know, they realize, you know, yes, they just, it's not necessary. Yes, yeah. yes. No, I just, I did want to get an opinion <laughs> of an established artist on, on that situation. I, I hope, like, I hope I won't get to that. You know, for me, I don't want power to corrupt me that much, you know. But if Tonyo's on your track, then you're going to be like, no, 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 this is Alexio. <laughs> not, not, not even. I would actually <laughs> give him, I'll, I'll give him three <laughs> verses <laughs> and I'll, I'll do a chorus. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, now that we are, we are we are talking about our music, um, yes. <laughs> I, I, I want to understand something, uh, Lex. Uh, we've got most of these young artists, um, young upcoming and budding artists that are singing today, and um, and we have got many artists that seem to have stolen the limelight, uh, maybe without any need to mention any names. Uh, do you, at a certain point in time, as an artist, feel like, you know what, I, I, I think I've been too quiet for a long time. Let me get up and do something because there are years, years in, years out that have gone. I think the past like two, three years, we've got some certain names dominating the music industry. Mm -hmm. Does that bother you at times to say, okay, where is the Alexio that used to make that much of noise? I need to get up. Um, I, I think, you know, where, where it bothers me and maybe other artists, uh, they tell me, Angu, yes, 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 that's very true. That's very true. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's because of the um, the monetary value that you then have as an artist if you keep quiet for too long but then i would really want to blame the industry yeah. because you know uh, with other industries once you've made a name you actually you maintain your value no matter you've been quiet for long because you still have that you still have a market that's the honest truth because as long as everyone who appreciated your music then is still alive then you still have a market. Um, and then, so, you know, when it comes to the reason why I said monetary value is now that someone is in the limelight, then you mm are -hmm. going to go But probably the impact that you made then was more than what they make it, they, they have now, you see. Right. But because it's, you, you, it's, it's a momentary artist, it's a, you have, you're an artist, I'm not saying anything bad about the, 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 the artists that we have now. But they come and they go. And then some of us, we're still there. You know, I'd like to cite Rocky, for example. We're still there. And in other countries, that artist, like if you take um, U2, for example, um, I, um, they have new songs, but they have their value because of what they did with that. So even if they don't release anything, but if they have a show, it will still fill up stadiums. On, and they can still charge. So I have a them. problem with you. Mm. A, a very big problem with you guys, mm. you know. What's, what's wrong with you guys? Why are you not simply... I understand you, you, you've done a, a very good comeback and you've just played your latest song here. Um, what's, what's feeling you guys to say? Because I'm, I'm happy you are very clear that an Alexio Kawara fan, always been an Alexio Kawara fan. For me, I still take you back into the days of Skanaga, Naga, Jibukubu, and all that. Those songs, they, they, they do well for me. If I'm to hear you have a show tonight, I would go there. Uh, God forbid there's COVID. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying, why are we not seeing a comeback of those artists that we used to listen to? And because we, we, you still have a place in our hearts, and you know, and you acknowledge that. So that means uh, I'm already speaking converted. What's wrong? What has gone ma, wrong? Makura, ma, ma imi my fans. Ah. Yeah, that's that's. But yes, you still have the same test. Yeah. But Pamakore Makura. Why I'm saying this is these my demographics say they have they they the uh, age groups that still 
uh, streams music that still goes out that still you know and then you guys now you're concentrating on life more than going out more than streaming Correct. more than yeah. you see yeah. so if i'm going to be competing with the, if i'm going to have you don't go out as often as you used to yeah it's true it's, it, yeah it's yeah. going to happen once in a while and then i'll, I'll pose a question to you Kuti. okay if i'm going to have a show once a year right and then i'll charge a hundred us dollars or 200 us dollars because it's that special and then the preparation everything and it's special for the people that die hard fans i'm sure you will have very few people because they'll be like ah what you see but then i cannot also be performing every week because you know what you're putting that you see so the, the idea is to yeah. you need to do one memorable show where you can bring all of this fans. But you can't allow six months to a year to go by without you guys doing a show. You are, do, you are doing us a disservice. Why are you allowing yourselves to die when us, your friends, are still alive? That's just my issue with you guys. Why have you just gone down and low? It's, it's, I think it's the industry. That's, that's, I think that's what I'll tell you. It's the industry that... So sometimes we actually end up doing other businesses because we're thinking, that, ah, you know what, this is not worth it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's a career also. You know, you oh, need yeah. to be making money. I have a family. I need to be, you know, um, making a living. Say once for about three months in that. <laughs> you know, not like the whole year. No, I'm, I'm sure you can. You can afford to give us a show. When, when last did you have a live show or performance? No, no. I, for me, I was doing shows, but when I'm speaking, I'm speaking generally, right? Okay. I'm speaking for, for, for the whole sector. For 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 all of us, this yeah. artist is so very irregular. My um, So I I used to do a lot of shows. Um, I think at least once a month I would have a show. That's healthy. You see? Yeah. 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 So, but but the thing is, it's it's not the same. You know, we like like back in the day, the way that my fans do my wira my it and my fans do my wira my But then I also have a solution to that, uh, and I think I hope I will be able to to do that soonest. The solution, obviously, would be to do collaborations and you know be relevant also to the younger generation. So that they can still, you know, and then collaborate your mature kind of sound yeah. with Poptain, uh, with Nati O, with Tami, <laughs> you know, with all yeah. these guys. Which, which is, which is, I think, a strategy that that could work. And as a team, um, myself and the team that I work with, we are actually looking into that at collaborations and doing other sounds, nice. which will obviously divert a little bit because I, I, I think my sound has moved more to a kind of jazzy kind of Afro fusion. The kind too of mature music. kind of music. I hear so you. I'm having to uh, <laughs> readjust my creativity oh, yeah. and think okay, so now and I just need to say three lines in a song and make it work. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I envision uh, a day and, and, and with the powers vested in me <laughs> 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 that, that will get you guys back. You know what I'm saying? I, I I think it'd be a very good thing to have you guys maybe quarterly or something like that. Because still, I know you can still belt even your whole tunes. Yes, you spoke about the reason of careers and stuff like that. But still, you, you owe us to us, be friends, to say, okay, okay, maybe a quarterly or maybe once in six months. Guys, we're going to be having something, a throwback from the old yes, school. Yes, that's you know, so it's just me screaming out. See, but it's fun. No, no, but I think I think it's something but that speaking, we can really work. But just yeah. speaking on behalf of maybe a younger generation to you guys, I was I've heard your music over the years, but recently I've been exposed. Tony was a huge fan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> huge fan. <Thank you>. <laughs> so, but I'm I'm glad because he like yeah, listening to your music, it's amazing, and I think by having more regular shows and even integrating yourself into the younger with the younger artists. Um, I think you teach them a lot, and I think there's a lot of sounds that we could incorporate with you, that also with some younger artists that um, that would be amazing. And I really think the younger yeah, and, generation and will learn a lot from you. We we'll definitely learn a lot from them too, yeah, you know, yeah. because obviously there's a lot that's been happening, and yes. that is happening that Shoguti Jamba, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so we also need yeah. to be in touch with what is going on right now, and then we can get to. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll work on. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, oh yeah, we are working on it. Since, working know, on it. Yeah, we have a new. No, but, album. but then the yeah. younger generation is not really new. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, we are something. So yeah, we are, we are, we are together now. No, so we, we are. <laughs> we are kind of. Yeah. So yeah. So expect something soon. Um, I actually, I actually have a song with Porky. Oh, I ho nice. Yeah. So still. Two guys from. That's what we're talking about. That's exactly what we're talking so, about. So have you ever done anything with Porky? Before that, no. Yeah. Before that, so this is our new something. It's already wow. out, so we're working on 
the strategy. How do you mean going out? No, it's out. Like it's it's no longer. It's it's done. Oh, it's yeah. not yet out, but oh, it's done. Oh, nice. So we're just waiting. We are going we're to come back waiting. and break this track. Yeah. <laughs> once, once you think it's, it's almost time, please, please, yes. please. Yes. yeah. And have a song. You are a soft type. I can't imagine you and Rocky there together in the same. I'm the soft type, but I also did Zazu, you know, guys. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, we just we just trying to be creative. No, no, it's it's. I think it's it's. It, it, people loved it. That's oh. all I can say. Yeah. Uh, with Rocky, it's a different different song. We we're just hanging out one day. We came up with a tune. We decided to to, to put it into song, and then it's called it's called Chagaipa. Wow. Yes. You have a golden voice. Rocky has a golden voice. Mm -hmm. Usually, we want to have people, uh, we usually have people uh, of, of different voice notes doing uh, collabs. This is a very unique uh, kind of a collaboration I've ever witnessed, even if I'm think back into the uh, days of music. But what, what, what inspired this collaboration? Um, I believe collaborations are, are big, best collaborations come out because of chemistry, okay. the chemistry between two artists, which is why sometimes you see one collaboration with... Um, if we were to collaborate, it might come out or it might not. And then maybe if we were to collaborate, it might do the opposite. Mm. You see, it's possible because yeah, it's the not... Example, the example should have said, if you were to collaborate, it may come out. So I, like, I, I, I think he's trying to let you know some. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Let's just have let's 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 progressive let's examples here. Yeah. With, with the cap fits. <laughs> with the cap fits. <laughs> so, I, I think, you know, collab if, so that, I think that's what happened with him. I was doing Haifa actually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the whole festive kind of mood. Yeah. So, we, the song came up. It was a chorus actually, but uh, we thought this is a cool chorus. And we said, let's do a song. Wow. Yeah. So, the chemistry. Are, are you going to give us like three seconds of the song? I think we got No, for, for this one, let's keep it the same. Okay. Right. So just wait for the exclusive when you yeah, come back. Yeah, and and the and and I need to give <laughs> props to Rocky as well. Yes. Yes. Quite creative. Oh, yeah, crazy, yeah, crazy yeah. Crazy yeah. Good yeah. It's sounding very, I'm, I'm sounding very different on the song. It's sounding mm -hmm. way different from the Wow. Song. It's from the Rocky that we know. So, yeah, expect a great song. I, I don't have a date yet for release, but soon, probably before October, the song will come Oh, is, yes. it a, is it a video or is it an audio? The, the, What's coming on? Is it a video? It's everything. It's the video oh. and the audio. Nice. At yeah, the same time. So we're working on that. And see how it goes. But it's about the song. So you guys will be dancing to it up to the top of the set. Can't wait. And she'll be going Yes, out. hopefully we'll be. <laughs> hopefully every, everything will be open. And the, the clouds will be open and we can get to. But fire. even if it's not, feel free to just come by. We can just put speakers in the room, have a listening party. So long as they're less than 50. I think by then they call me lockdown in Baron. So is there any advice you can just give any young and aspiring artists um, that are trying to make it? I know it's especially difficult here in Zimbabwe. Um, so you understand from a different point of view. So, um, <coughs> I, I guess uh, for young artists, journey is not easy. Um, take it from me. The, 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 the thing is with every artist that is up there, we, okay, this is the statement that I read somewhere. <laughs> and, and we know, we see the story, but we don't see the history. History, yes. So the history is what's important. Okay. And not many people say it, not many people bother to mm -hmm. find out. But mm -hmm. I, I've been through a lot. I'm sure everyone is up there. Just hang in there, mm -hmm. push as much as you can, and there is the light at the end of the sun. So, yeah, I guess, and then, like I said, it's an appreciation. Yes. Appreciation. So, if you can request one person, I, 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 I had a question that I've always wanted to ask. I know we are almost at the close of this show. I wouldn't have done justice if I just won't ask this question. I just need to understand something next. When you started music, uh, I know them. Van, you might get that. Did you have any sort of observations from your parents saying you can't be doing this? Uh, my, my, my father didn't say anything. My mother, naturally, she is the 
Later on, when she started seeing all these tech options, she started encouraging me. She actually encouraged me, like, recently, you know, because obviously the difficulties that we all go through. She was like, you know what, if there was a time that I ever saw you working hard was this time when you recorded Khan and the album. So why are you giving, it, giving up now? So which means she was noticing mm. all that was going on and seeing how much passion I had. So parents, yes, they do. Some of them do, but for me, for me, I think they can really encourage. My father was just like he started lying and checking up, but also my father was late. So when I really started uh, rising up, he was already late, and I, I don't know what he would have thought, but I'm sure right now he would have. Been super proud. Yeah, super proud. Super proud. Did, did you have a time inside your career where you said, well, maybe this album or this phase, uh, music as a business, it was more financially uh, rewarding to you within your past career since you started music. Do you have any certain time or, and, or maybe overally uh, how would you see it as a business and if it was rewarding, do you have a certain time where you say at least this album would you say, I think it made financial sense to you? I think I think 2009 uh, with the album Kana. Kana is where I had so, so I got a lot of deals, a lot of performances stories in this. Uh, I did um, uh, some shows in Victoria Falls with the Rapid Tourism Authority. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think I think that time for me was good. But then generally, my graph has always been almost you know there. It hasn't like really <laughs> been steep. Um, so I'm comfortable. Mm. Let's see. But obviously. <laughs> everyone needs everyone I'm needs still waiting for that day where we can as Zimbabweans where we can yeah. just from Zimbabwe uh, no disrespect to what uh, Sasha Shasha um, achieved but I, I also I'm waiting for that day where we have music produced here released mm. here in Zim where we can see that's our guy with the yes, mark in it. Yeah. and then oh congratulations to Shasha by the way yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for to the music produced here, yeah, you know. I, so, but it's it's a whole it's a whole lot of work mm. from production, marketing, the, everything we need it done for us. So thank you guys for even what you're doing now for putting us out there. And, uh, you just have to me. Yeah. So, so after doing this, so maybe I can just get to be in the studio yeah. with him once more. You were really trying to back your project. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let me ask you a very, maybe that's my last question for, uh, to you. It's a, it's a very unfair question. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of artists move into what trends and the topical issues. And one of those topical issues in Zimbabwe has been the politics of our country. Do you see yourself ever writing a song about politics of this country? Well, not really, but I will comment about social issues. So I just wanted to add on to that because you are involved in activism. Yes, I am. Yes, human yes. rights. Um. Human rights, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I will talk about social issues. Okay. You know, um, if I, I, I'm not too sure if that will get into politics, mm. but social issues are social issues. Yeah. You know, um, if um, people are being raped out there, if people are being unfair out there, if people are being... And I have done, I have done songs where I believe I'm commenting social but then you know as an artist you know, my, my music is mostly abstract mm -hmm. and then people can pick whatever they think. There's a song called Monday on my album, the current album where I'm reminiscing of the good old days where we would have you know unity I think for me I think that's my part and also personally when I talk about social issues I don't want to look at the negatives. Mm -hmm. I want to motivate people. That's me you know. So I know I've seen even on social media people uh, about the issues in Zimbabwe, not standing up and stuff like that. But you know what? It's it's about what you really believe. You know, if I am going to say something, is it going to change anything? That's my my view. Because I want to say things that will change, no matter who is listening, their mind. So if I'm going to instill violence, for me, that's not the change that I'm looking at. I'm looking at change for creating peace. I need people to be peaceful. So if if I'm going to say to you are being unfair or something like that. I don't know how you're going to take it. 
but I would rather preach to you the proper message, you know, of how I would want you, how I want you to feel it from within yourself to change. That's my view of music. If you should feel it to change within yourself, not to be to, to be changed because you are sick. On a, on a normal day, I do political shows. <laughs> this is all I'll say today so that I don't digress. Back to you. So that I won't be tempted and I'm not going to be tempted. <laughs> I'll disappoint you all our fans. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Back to you. Yeah, no, that, that's super amazing. And I feel just on what you've said about comments made about local artists. Um, I do understand where you're coming from, and I, I totally agree. Um, but I do feel like there's very, very, very few artists locally that make social issues public. So I do commend you on that, and I can understand why it's difficult and really hard to do it, especially in Zimbabwe. But I think it's very important, and when you have these platforms, we have to provide, we have to do some sort of good for everyone around us, because ultimately the fans fuel everyone's careers. So I really do commend you on that. Thank you. Thank you. So I think just before we sign out, uh, what's your signing out, Frank? Uh, so that we just uh, give it up to our, to our fans and, uh, uh, and, uh, and we, we, we shut down this. I, I, I don't know your, what would, would be, Lex, like, you're not choosing? But I think, no, we didn't ask him what's his oh, yes, best track. Oh, yes, yes, what song is, yeah, yeah, yeah. before we go. It is, you're no, your, your is best. It, is it about me here, yeah, or you want me to say it for the fans? Because I, <laughs> but I, it's for you, it's for you <laughs> and I, I, I know for, for, for the people here and the people behind the scene, there's this song that, I, when I got here. Yeah, really yes, 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 that's one, yes, yes, that's one. So that's one, your, your personal <laughs> best. <laughs> that, that, no, your personal favorite. My personal favorite is Mirat Tauri, but I would really want us to sign out with Carry yes. out. Okay, fine. So what we're gonna do is. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying not to be so. Okay, <laughs> no, fine, fine. We will, we will, we will sign out with Carry Ka But I think, I think let's just uh, give uh, people a bit of a feel of your your personal best, right? Because okay. I know your personal best to many people. It's one of those rich, lyrical, lyrically uh, rich uh, song, uh, which may have missed a radio or popularism of. I know this song from Alex Rukawa. So let's let's just play this song. Uh, it's called. Mila Tower. Tower, yes, uh, that track. I, 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 I've been playing it as well recently. It's, it's, it's lyrically, uh, it's, it's rich, but I know it may have not reached a lot of uh, uh, viewers there, so I think we can just have it.
um, we hope that you join us next week. We'll have another show live at 3 p.m. next Saturday. We'd like to thank Alexio for joining us in studio and being our first guest. This was amazing. Um, so we're going to sign out with an amazing song by Alexio called Camilo Aka. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.